while the outsourcing of jobs from north to south, from east to west, while a lot of that was a dominant trend in the late 20th century, the big, biggest challenge to workers in countries like mine today is technology. And the biggest challenge for your new president, when we think about how we're going to employ more people here, is going to be also technology, because artificial intelligence is here and it is accelerating. And you're going to have driverless cars, and you're going to have more and more automated services. And that's going to make the job of giving everybody work that is meaningful tougher. And we're going to have to be more imaginative. And the pace of change is, is going to require us to do more fundamental reimagining of our social and political arrangements to protect the economic security and the dignity that comes with a job. It's not just money that a job provides. It provides dignity and structure and a sense of place and a sense of purpose. And so we're going to have to consider new ways of thinking about these problems like a universal income, review of our work week, how we retrain our young people, how we make everybody an entrepreneur at some level. But we're going to have to worry about economics if we want to get democracy back on track. Has anybody struck you as particularly strong? I actually feel like Buttigieg is having a night. Buttigieg is doing well. I think Andrew Yang is always strong. I'm you not going to lie. I think he, like his numbers are solid. He has interesting like $1, ideas. Like $1,000 a month is a solid number? No, his numbers are solid. Like He knows what he's talking about. Okay, That's a proposal. Yes. Right. We don't know whether it'll work or not. That's a proposal. Right. But I'm saying like he just he knows what he's talking about and he thinks about things differently. That's... What is Tom Sire dressing for? It's unclear. Santa Claus at the local mall. Do you have a tie like that? I don't. That's like a. Bring, I mean, me, bring me that kilt. The kilt that we turn into a tie. I want that kilt. I feel bring like that. he thought he wasn't going to qualify until a December debate. Like I only have the tartan tie, honey. What did you thought of Biden? I think Biden still has too many moments where his train of thought doesn't seem to be... Yeah, when he said he was going to erase the capital gains tax, and I was like, say what? And then he was like, I mean, raise it! Yeah, he started talking about George Washington, and then he said 17, and then I don't know what, what the 17 was, and then he went back and he goes and he leaves. I'll be honest with you, when there's 12 people on stage, I don't think anyone has I the know. best shot of being a coherent human being, so... Do you think we've learned any lessons since 2016? If anything, maybe the Democrats have learned when you have a shit ton of candidates, that means you have a shit ton of debates. And having a shit ton of debates means that more people watch you and your policies. And maybe that's how Donald Trump uh, ascended to the presidency. If you have four people on stage who are all sane, it's extremely boring. So when you have 12 people who are sane, it's just snippets and then it's exciting. Unfortunately, you cannot separate American politics from American entertainment. And so the more entertaining the debates are, the more likely people are to listen and watch them, and the more people are watching them, the more likely they are to vote.